Hello everyone, it's Dee Dee Wood. Welcome to the second week of Educational Leadership. You guys are doing a great job. Your student homepages have been really interesting. It's amazing the things that you've done, traveling, teaching on reservations, uh, children, uh, becoming grandparents, uh, animals. I like how you're all bragging about your animals. I'm actually at home this morning with my opal, so let me show you. Can you come here? Oh, this is our new puppy, Opal. Say hello. <laughs> She's more interested in her chewy bone than educational leadership. Uh, today, uh, Today's lesson and this week's lesson, uh, I actually really like uh, this week's lesson. Anything to deal with Patton uh, and George C. Scott always make me happy. And you know that you have a writing assignment um, that's going to be due no later than Sunday midnight. It's worth 90 points. And it's a movie analysis where you are going to be looking at different leadership styles. And um, when I was thinking about Patton, I was thinking about something that somebody asked him one time. They were harassing him about his language with his troops. And of course, you know, it's definitely colorful. Uh, and he said to them, you know, I, I speak to my soldiers the way that we speak to each other. And this is how we create our camaraderie. And um, I always got a kick out of that. And... Um, and although we don't want to, uh, you know, uh, cuss and speak the language of our teenagers the way that they speak in school, or some of you have the littles, um, there is still a way that you can communicate that um, creates a group, creates a team, and, and makes the kids want to follow you. Uh, once again, I've said this before, humor uh, plays into it. Um, and uh, I think a lot of you, from what I've read so far, see that as well. Um, one of the funny quotes that I was looking back, uh, some of the things that General Patton believed in, and I thought you would just get a kick out of this. Um, of course, say what you mean and mean what you say. And we've already talked about that. Last week we were talking about walking the walk and talking the talk. Saying what you mean and meaning what you say is exactly the same thing. Uh, but one of my favorite ones, hang on, I've got to find it on here. Uh, there is no power in a bushel of blubber. I was like, oh, thanks, General Patton, but I get what he's saying. Make the mind command the body. Never let the body command the mind. Brain power comes from the lungs. I thought that was a kick. So you can look up information about him outside of the um, George C. Scott, Scott Patton video, but it's fantastic, and I think you'll really enjoy it. And of course, Chamberlain, um, we should all know about from Civil War teaching. And um, looking at these two leaders and how they inspired their troops to follow them and to accomplish their task is pretty interesting. Uh, remember on the discussion boards that you want to make sure that for each question you are responding to at least two other peers. The thing about being online is we don't get to meet together in a traditional classroom where we can really have these intense collaborative conversations. So we have to have those through the discussion board. So make sure for each question that after you write your response that one, you reference the readings in your response and that you use your APA citation at the bottom of your response so that I can see where you've got it and that you've cited it correctly. And then you want to go back and you want to make sure that you respond to two of your peers related to the topic. So that's for both discussion questions. Um, also remember to check your spelling and your grammar. We all make mistakes. Um, I just turned 50. I catch myself making mistakes. I've read something numerous times and I'll go back and I'll be like, how did, how did I miss that? <laughs> how did I miss something so silly? And um, so we just need to check that. Um, some people like to type their responses um, to the discussion board on a Word document where they can edit and check it and then paste it into um, our discussion board. And that's fine, whatever's best for you. Note that if um, you didn't get the amount of points that you thought you were going to get on the discussion board, I've left feedback to you as to why. And once you correct that, I will look at your work again, whatever it may be that I asked you to correct. And just shoot me a quick email and let me know um, that you've corrected and completed the work. And I will go back and look at that for you. Um, the discussion board questions this week, hang on, let me scroll down to my page. I'm going to start using the split screen so you can just look with me, probably next one. But we have, how does the 
presence or absence of emotional intelligence impact a teacher's ability to enlist students in a proactive vision of their educational experience? And number two, identify and describe one strategy that you used or would like to use to engage students in the quest for meaningful achievement. If you have used this strategy, please give a description of its effect on your group. Classify this activity as an example of envisioning the future, searching for opportunity, or experimenting in risk-taking. Um, I had a student um, a while back, and he was... Um, he was not uh, like a handful in the sense that he was um, extremely rude in class, but he just had this dismissive air about him. And um, I remember one time I was typing directly onto the screen and I had speaking of this, we were speaking of this in the discussion board, I misspelled something, uh, I was typing really fast and I switched two letters. And um, somebody, you know, called me out on it. And I said, oh, thank you. And he said under his breath, oh, this is going to be our English teacher. And, um, you know, the first part of me, the administrative part of me, the power position in the room, if you have it, wanted to lash out immediately. And, um, you know, my emotional intelligence allowed me to realize that something more was going on and um, so I waited until after class and then I just spoke to him privately and I just said you know it really hurt my feelings when you said that you know we all make mistakes and I was typing quickly and it would have been nice if you had you know called me out in a kinder way and uh, he he was shocked and I think that he kind of did it to see if he was going to get a rise out of me at that time and of course he didn't and um, he never did anything like that again I found out soon after that that he was a triplet uh, which was interesting him and his two brothers uh, other two brothers looked exactly alike it was very hard to tell them apart luckily I didn't have all three of them in my own class but um, they were uh, had a very hard background they were in and out of foster care um, he had a lot of reasons to try to get my attention, whether it be positive or negative. And what I found out about him is that he was an amazing artist. And I mean an amazing artist. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to become a tattoo artist um, when, you know, later on in life, when he was old enough to be able to do it. And he really didn't feel that he needed a uh, high school education to be able to be a great artist in the tattoo world, which actually he's right, you don't. But um, I wanted to buy him into our shared vision of what his life could be if he did have an education. And so when you're looking at strategies and when they're asking you to classify where you're going to put it, um, this would be in my um, envisioning the future with him. And so what I did is I waited until our relationship built um, over time and helped him with his work. And like I said, he became, you know, never said anything snarky to me again after that. And then I just let him know one day that I actually was friends and had been friends in my youth and still in, in my, you know, adult life with many of the really famous tattoo artists in America and uh, he was shocked and it was funny to see you know they look at you as you are now and they can't imagine that you've had any life outside of you know looking like a little Miss Puddle Duck PTA lady that I do now and uh, they can't imagine what I was like when I was in my youth or that I was ever friends with people like this um, they consider it almost like subversive so he kind of looked at me differently and I said um, you know I go uh, these people would be happy to help you, but they're going to want to know that you're serious about your education, that you're willing to graduate high school before, you know, um, they would be willing to give you an apprenticeship. And that was all he needed. Once he could start envisioning the future for himself, and once he saw that I wasn't trying to um, push uh, this uh, traditional idea of you have to get this education and you have to go to college. Instead, I was looking at his future and seeing his values and his beliefs and what he wanted to become and saying, 
if you get this education, these people will support you and will mentor you in your chosen field. And that made all the difference. Um, he's doing great. He's a senior this year. He's about to graduate. And of course, he is excited to meet uh, the people that hopefully he will be mentoring for. Um, so that's an example of how emotional intelligence can impact. Um, several of you have already been talking about this in um, the discussion board. Stephanie, you brought it up in relation to Dion. And um, it makes a huge difference with your students. And many of you that have been teaching for um, quite a few years now, you know I've been teaching for 27 years. I have students that are still in my life and that our relationship, my emotional intelligence, my experience with them has helped to shape them and move forward and they still come back to me. In fact, I just had a student, this is kind of a funny off topic thing, but I just had a student who is uh, now in his 30s. He has three children and a wife and he called me and he said, Miss, Miss Wood, I need to speak to somebody worldly. And I'm like, worldly? About what? And he said, I really want to take my wife out to a um, lovely dinner for our anniversary. And I knew that you would know um, the local places that would really have, you know, a lovely ambiance and, and be something special for her. And that's the type of relationship that I want to have with my students, that they still find connection with me year after year after year. And I think we see this with these leaders like Patton and Chamberlain, even though they're completely different leadership styles, that um, they, create this they created this connection that made these soldiers want to follow. And we have soldiers of education, and we need to make them want to follow. So I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this this week. Uh, I look forward to um, reading. Uh, please contact me. Uh, several of you have contacted me already by email. That's great if email is better for you than phone. I totally understand. Um, just contact me. Don't ever feel you're putting me out. And I want you guys to have a great week and have a great teaching week. And I'll talk to you later.